we got Perfect Body. Obviously, the best place to go for advice and education on a serious subject like eating disorders, a TV movie from 1997. And she doesn't cheat on him once. And I'm like, this is a TV movie, you guys. <laughs> this is the tamest TV movie you've ever, there's ever been. This month, Tumble Track is having their holiday sale on home gymnastics equipment, including air floors and air tracks. You guys, I love these so much. They're so fun. So if you don't want your neighbors to think that you're breaking a hole in the floor with a hammer, maybe get one of these air tracks for your house and you can jump around and it's super fun. You can practice your skills and your neighbors won't hate you. So Tumble Track, visit T-U-M-B-L. T-R-A-K, tumbletrack.com, train smart. Remember, this show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. Today, we have a commissioned episode about the perfect body, the 1997. The movie. movie. To clarify, not about (laughs) the perfect body, which would be very inappropriate. (laughs) Spencer's not modeling today. Um, (laughs) It. (laughs) Uh, Yes, the 1997 TV movie, the sensation, the hit that was. The perfect body. <laughs> Today is November 6, 2023. Welcome to Gymcastic, the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm just going to hear with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation. This episode was commissioned by Club Gym Nerd member Anonymous. She actually bought all the shares of a group commission, which are the only sh- kind of commissions that you can buy right now, is the group one. So if you want to buy all the shares, go ahead. You can check it out at the Join the Club tab at gymcastic.com. Club Gym Nerd members get goodies, like they can dedicate an episode or do a mini commission, and they get discounts. They get live show tickets early and discounts on live show tickets, discounts on our merch, and they help support the show and make this sustainable, amazing podcast that's been around for 11 years now. Um, so is it longer than 11 years now? Okay. The it important is thing is, also, <laughs> we gave away a commissioned episode during October to one of our members, and Victoria H., you're a winner. You have an email. So get in touch because you can't buy these anymore. You can only win them. But you can buy the group commissions. And that's what Anonymous did. And she commissioned this episode, or he, who knows, and asked uh, and left this note specifically. I can't wait any longer. So this is my commission. I have been a member forever and can honestly say this podcast is a major part of my wellness. I survived an awful job, survived being a frontline healthcare worker during COVID, all because of Jessica and Spencer. I am older than most listeners. I did giants on not round bars. Remember when they decided springboards didn't need springs? Question mark 1982. Yes! And never learned a front aerial. This is a thank you to the community you built. It literally saved me. That's going to be. Thank you so much. That is so nice to hear. And thank you for what you did during the pandemic and what you continue to do because, my God, I don't know how you guys did it. Okay. Now. Can't wait. The year is 1997. What a time it was. Scrunchies. Grunge <laughs> music. Seattle was very popular at the time. Did Especially I live in this there? movie. Yeah, I think I lived in Seattle in 97. And vel- crushed velvet leotards were all mm. the rage, you guys. Um, and What else was all the rage was TV movies. That was still a thing that happened. On a Monday night in fall on NBC, we got Perfect Body. Obviously, the best place to go for advice and education on a serious subject like eating disorders, a TV movie from 1997. That's where (laughs) I get all my information. That's where I'm sure to go. Hour 24 minutes of this movie, I am basically a doctor at this point. So, you know, (laughs) this is a ridiculous movie. We're going to be ridiculous about it. But also, if this is, you know, a sensitive topic for you in particular as a listener, we love you and we want you to take care of yourself, but we are going to be, you know, very ridiculous about this very ridiculous movie. Starting with the cast, a cast of a cast of legends, really. Legend. We have Amy Jo Johnson from Felicity, star, who plays Andy, who is in the high school, we guess. She's like on the verge of starting the 25th grade, I guess, even though we hear the entire movie that she is a straight A student. I'm like, then why are you still in high school at the age of 27? But you know, details, details. She's in high school. She's on her high school gymnastics team, but also as like maybe a senior in high school, just learned that she might have what it takes to qualify elite. Um, And also the Olympics are like tomorrow and she's probably going to make it. Yeah, because that's how the process works. Um, I would just like to say that 
if you star in a gymnastics movie in your youth, you're destined to have a great career. Keanu Reeves, mm. gymnastics movie. That's in our group mm -hmm. commissions. Who's the one in Stick It? She's in all the shows. She's constantly playing a cop that's solving a crime, finding someone in a uniform, an NCIS, something blue. She's in all those. Yeah, you guys, it's this is the way to go. Amy Jordan Thompson, robust acting career. <laughs> yes. And like three feet tall. So she gets to do the Kristen Bell syndrome and play a child well into your 30s. It works perfectly. <laughs> I She's do like, love you it. know, smoking a pack of cigarettes, like wow, wow, cry, et cetera. I'm a baby. Like, fine. We are all fine with it. Okay. Oh my God. My favorite person that's in this is Wendy Malik. You guys, if you don't know who Wendy Jess Malik is, a is, huge Wendy Malik fan. I love Wendy Malik. <laughs> she was in Just Shoot Me, Frasier, Hot in Cleveland. Where most was she recently. In I have no memory. Frasier. Of that. She was one of the many love interests of the dad in Frasier. And she was like a performer and always she was like she offended Frasier and his brother and Niles so much. Like they mm. were like, she's so classless. Um, but Excellent. she was the babysitter when they were kids and they had a crush on her. Anyway, love her. <laughs> I have forgotten about your weirdly encyclopedic knowledge of the show Frasier. It's the only thing I can remember. That I is something I had forgotten about, and now I remember. Yeah, Jessica has an encyclopedic knowledge of no gymnast names and every episode of Frasier. Um, yeah, so Wendy Malick, who plays the mom, she may or may, it's 1997, so her character may or may not have a name. She could just be like, woman mom is basically her role. And her her part is like, her purpose is like to be like, I'm worried about Andy and then not do anything about it. Like we have 19 different scenes where she's like really worried about Andy. Oh, well, but also definitely the movie has to blame her the most because mom character, even though she's the only one who notices anything is wrong or cares, which is the, the gender roles are a trip in this movie. Like that is the stuff that has aged the worst. The, let me just tell you though, the male gaslighting, the female human being has is ageless spencer <laughs> ageless and timeless that the amount of times the mom is gaslit by the dad first of all also why is it the mom that always has to give up everything the she mom gives up her job. her job yeah mm -hmm. she gives up her job she's the one that moves she's the one that has to give up her sex life because we find at the, at the end the first thing they do when they move back home is her and the dad like run upstairs and she's like let's go get upstairs dude you gaslit mm -hmm. me enough now I know. get in the bedroom she doesn't, she, like she moves to seattle with andy to train elite while the dad's still living in portland and she doesn't cheat on him once and i'm like this is a tv movie you guys <laughs> this is the tamest tv movie you've ever there's ever been you didn't even wendy malik cheat on her husband like what are we, why would you even make this movie what are we doing over here so much drama lost i mean they obviously took no notes from the later make it or break it because all of those things happened in the make it or break although it. they took some of their casting they did <laughs> they were like people. but i do love how like so it's basically like mostly wendy malik's fault everything just like just anything that happens. Meanwhile, the dad is the literal worst and bears like the movie gives him no responsibility whatsoever. He's like, well, I wasn't here. I wasn't present as a father. So I guess I can't be held responsible for anything. Dun, 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 dun. Fixed. His entire like what the job does when they did a <laughs> casting call for this, they were like white man gaslighting. That's the whole thing. <laughs> Thing. there's another man coaching her we should defer to other man gaslight 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 there's something wrong gaslight she's in the hospital gaslight we should have never taught jessica the word gaslight <laughs> I, I feel so, like all the time all the time now <laughs> yeah also i do want to talk about how andy is supposed to be also trying to do high school cheerleading and train elite at the same time with her best friend. They were supposed with to do it best, together. With her best friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They oh, were supposed to do cheerleading to the together. Best friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, but like kind of buried the lead here because also in this movie is Kathy Rigby, star of World Championships 1970, who plays Kathy Rigby, but not, but she's there. And you're like, Kathy Rigby's here holding a syringe over by <laughs> bars. And we're just going to be okay with that. That is maybe the, the weirdest, the wildest part of this movie that I want to talk about a lot. The scene where Andy has 
hurt her ankle trying so she can't get up on this like diagonal beam that's like a height a beam has never been it's the weirdest stage scene and so the coach is like your ankle hurts go over to kathy rigby to get some cortisone and kathy rigby's just standing there with a syringe like stabby stabby and then we don't talk about that ever again and it never comes up a totally normal thing for your as kathy rigby introduces herself i'm like the trainer, doctor, psychologist, coach, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and but I'm also, just are you a doctor? Because that is not <laughs> clear because you said it, but also I don't see any qualifications here. So, <laughs> go so, to medical Ma- school. <laughs> so if you don't know who Kathy Rigby is. <laughs> How dare um, you? Oh my God. Icon. <laughs> so Kathy Rigby, the first world medalist for the U.S., she was our first gymnast who got a menstrual product sponsorships you know Mm -hmm. with a flower and and a pad next to her in the advertisements she her mom had polio because this is pre-vaccine days and had trouble like taking care of her brothers and sisters so kathy rig would like go to school go like make food for her brothers and sisters to help her mom out then go to training and then she was just like an incredible person and the i mean she is an incredible person was incredible gym is incredible person went on to be in the theater and played peter pan for one Mm -hmm. like the most times ever she also i don't know if you know i don't know if it's really the most times ever but for like decades she played peter pan um (laughs) i'm surprised you didn't proclaim that she was tied with someone else for the most (laughs) most times playing peter pan did you know kathy rigby is in a space capsule that was like hurled into space to be like earth it's awesome we won't kill you if you come here look here's kathy rigby did you know that fact i did not know that yes she is kathy rigby also had an eating disorder for many 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 years and it wasn't until she was in the theater that someone was like hey you have an eating disorder we need to get this fixed she's very open about this super proactive about in the community helping with this and she's just like she's an all-out badass and i have so much respect for her and also one of the best actors in this her tiny parts stood out the most yeah Mm -hmm. she's so good like you're like oh you've been in the theater your entire (laughs) life you get it like every time i was like i believe you i hear you i feel like you (laughs) care about me i love her she needed to take some of these teen actors aside (laughs) <laughs> and be like listen let's let's do an acting class um we also have our make it or break it crossover because payson's dad from make it or break it is tough guy coach in this movie who is tough elite guy coach who is tough elite guy and coach and like we when we meet him he's literally standing in the background with like a rolled up programmy thing in his hand like basically like a rolled up newspaper to tell us like iron fist it's yeah it's not subtle um, and it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> His entire character is mean. Just be yeah. mean and yell, tap, tap, tap! <laughs> Okay, yeah, we have to talk about tap. <laughs> there is a phenomenal scene. So clearly this movie learned that, like, tap is something that you would say in regard to bars. So there is an entire routine that he is supposed to be coaching. And he's just yelling tap through a whole bars routine. <laughs> You guys, no one's ever yelled tap so aggressively (laughs) so many times in a routine. Totally inappropriate times. (laughs) Like, there is nothing to tap. in a handstand. Tap! Tap! (laughs) (laughs) Mid-Jaeger. Tap! Tap what? I'm in mid-air! He went to that one practice somewhere where he was supposed to learn how to be a mean, awful coach. And all he took away from it was tap. Although, Ugh. also, which is very typical, a phenomenon very typical of, like, gymnastics movies or shows with a gymnastics episode, where they write the coach as, like, the meanest they could possibly think a coach could be, and it's actually, like, 1,000 times nicer than reality. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. So this movie aired the day after the 97 Worlds, and I was like, if the Worlds team got back and were like let me turn on the TV and watch this. They would be like, oh, this is the nicest coach I've ever seen. (laughs) So true. So true. And by the way, like what shows us that he's like the way the movie shows us that he's a monster is that like he has ways in the gymnast at the beginning of the day. And so we know here is a movie in 1997 
where the co- where they're like they're demonstrating this is a bad coach this is a bad guy because he's weighing the gymnasts and then we have actual gymnastics coaches being like well that was back in 2002 we had no idea we were not supposed to do this it's like yes you did everybody did the um, tv movie did that you knew that you weren't supposed to do that and the weighing in the middle of the gym, like bringing the scale out, putting it next to the floor and lining everybody up, like so accurate. This was mm. so mm-hmm. accurate, you guys. Like this is the other thing we have to get in with this movie is like, it's hilarious, but also everything in this movie is accurate. All of it. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> we'll talk about the competition, the ending competition a little bit later. But also, yeah, the movie goes but, super soft on this coach, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. He just gets to be like, I guess the main problem is your mom and also society. And it's like, but you, but you like also, a lot. You a big, you a big deal. You're a big problem. We also have a blonde haired gymnast to comp to be a counterpart to Amy Jo Johnson, who is a brunette. So you can tell the difference between them. We also have like the blonde gymnast who is the one who was already successful at the gym and was the big fish at the gym before Andy gets there. And even if you haven't seen this movie, you already know everything about her character. If you've ever watched anything about gymnastics ever, you got it, you know, snarky bitch. Uh, all the, <laughs> You know, thank God they had a blonde and a brunette gymnast. Because the other thing yeah. I learned in this is no people of color do gymnastics right. at all. None. I was like, it's Seattle, right? Seattle is not the whitest place on earth, even in 1997. And neither was gymnastics in 1997. So anyway, I was highly offended by the whiteness of this movie. Hmm. Yeah, there were a lot of moments where I was like, what Seattle is this supposed to be? Right. Like that nice house that she's able to move to with no job. I'm like, what Seattle in that like beautiful neighborhood it's like what yes. seattle is this with no money that you can this move was here the it microsoft- doesn't rain once <laughs> in this whole movie it's sunny the microsoft <laughs> like boom time no one can afford anything 90s that's where we are anyway guys it's a very believable seattle blonde gymnast blonde rival slash you know frenemy does get the best line in the whole movie where andy goes but you've already meddled at the Olympics. And she's like, team medal, big deal. I was like, ha ha, good one, blonde girl. <laughs> and this movie is one year after the 96 Olympics and the Atlanta team medal. And I did like that little like <laughs> team medal. Um, okay, also, I can't wait to talk about the boyfriend because I have a lot oh to say about the boyfriend. God, the, In, what a dud. The lesson, <laughs> the underlying lesson of this whole movie is... American men are horrible. Okay. It was this, so strong. He, okay. Like, this part is played by like a piece of poster board with a D minus on it is this boyfriend. Like it's, he, he is such a zero. Like <laughs> this boy needs to get a life and she needs to kick him to the curb. Like the whole movie, he's always like, it's like you're acting that gym, like gymnastics is more important than me. Like, yes, obviously gymnastics <laughs> is more important than you. Like, there's so much, like, he shows up in the middle of training, and Andy's like, I can't talk to you, I'm training. And, like, that's her fault, and she's a horrible person, because she doesn't, like, stop her beam routine to talk to him. And he walks into the middle of the gym! Oh, my God. He can't walk under the floor as a muggle! That's the first rule of gymnastics, no muggles on the floor, because you're gonna trip and break your neck on something, you're gonna walk in front of someone, you are too Mm -hmm. dangerous. I was like, oh, my God, I would have walked him off the floor and be like, you stand over here... You don't have the skills to walk on a gymnastics floor. Rude. Rude. And I feel like the least realistic part of this whole movie is that he comes into the gym and has a long conversation with her during training. And she doesn't get immediately murdered and forbidden from ever looking at a boy ever or talking to a boy ever again. Like, I, allegedly, me and Coach just lets this whole conversation happen when she's supposed to be working out on beam. And I'm like, there's no way. There's no way that coach would just be sitting there watching that happen. <laughs> I do, I do appreciate the sex positive nature of this show. There's a lot of making out. There's a lot of like, There's you know, not a lot of sex. I wanted no. Wendy Malik to have some more. <laughs> <laughs> she gets some at the end. Finally, finally. But that guy doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Okay. But let me just tell you the foreshadow, like the underlying current of mm-hmm. men are bad for you in this. Yeah. First boy that we see her boyfriend whose friend a friend walks by and talks tells andy the main character gymnast girl um oh thanks for letting me look at your test like he's cheating off of her that's Mm -hmm. the first thing and the 
the boyfriend's bragging about it. Later, they're having a phone conversation and the boyfriend's like, I have to go. It's so-and-so. And he has the answers to the test. And she's like, yeah. you're going to do great. I'm like, you cheater. All these boys are cheater, cheater, cheaters. Oh. And then what happens at the mm -hmm. end? He cheats. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that happened. And also, like the tamest cheating, like a smooch, it was which a smooch. counts, Spencer. It does. I'm not saying it doesn't count. I'm saying like you could have made this way more interesting movie because this is kind of a snore. And but also, so he kisses the best friend, which of course he did. We saw that coming a mile away. The only one who ends up apologizing in that whole situation is Andy for training too much. Right. She's the only one who apologizes. I was like, where are we? And also, it, the, 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 hold on. The cheating doesn't stop. The boy steals a candle from the restaurant when he brings her the pizza and tries to force her to eat. This boy is a klepto cheater from the start. We mm -hmm. knew he was bad news. Yeah, All bad the news. signs were there. The worst. Just and no exactly. wonder she ends up with him with a dad like that who just gaslights the mom all the time. <sighs> Don't get me started on this guy. He doesn't deserve her. All right. I think we need to up the mood a little bit <laughs> by talking about the the stunt gymnast cuz really the highlight of yes. of this of the movie is like like definitely like top half of gymnastics movie shows in terms of stunt work. Like it's it's yes. up there. Like they do a good job. So would you like to take it away? Yes. Oh my god. Okay. So do you guys remember Shari Knight Hunter or Shari Knight or Shari Hunter? Okay. She went to Oregon State. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. They got her signature move in the movie, which her signature move was a reverse planche at the very end of the beam in what we used to call English style, but it's a long way handstand, not a sideways handstand. Very end of the beam, reverse planche all the way over till she's horizontal and then crosses one leg over the other. Like, I'm just lounging on the beach like this, sunning myself in the south of France. And then does her beam. I love this routine so much. She's amazing. Total standout at Oregon State. Um, and then she continued doing elite after she completed mm. her career. She had all the records for 20 years at Oregon State. All, yeah, she's she had, on the she wall. She had the records, and then Jade was like, actually, Jade Carey was like, actually, these are mine. But for like 20 years, until Jade was like, actually, all of them, immediately in my freshman year, Shari Knight had all of the records. She won the award in 94. I don't know if you remember this story, but there's a story, I think it's in the call. It's one of the East Coast papers. There's a story about why she continued elite after she was at Oregon State. And she said, I think it was she and her husband were driving home and they came upon a car accident and it was really horrible and it had a total effect on her. And she's like, oh my God, I'm alive. I can still do this. Why am I stopping gymnastics when I love it so much? And that's part of why she went back into mm -hmm. elite gymnastics. So yeah, she, a few weeks after the movie came out, didn't she compete? Well, she would have been at nationals before. The oh, before the movie, out, but it was like was right, yeah. That, so, like this movie comes out that year. She's at nationals. She got fourth on bars. She's competing elite at nationals while also being like stunts for this. Great. Yeah, I also love that we got so much '90s college gymnastics in this. Yeah, uh -huh. which was every every top school like Oregon State and Utah at the time. The top schools had the round off to some kind of turning leap mm -hmm. into a bounder that is yeah. if you didn't have that in your routine what are you mm -hmm. even trying in college and, and I, we saw it 110 times in this movie like <laughs> every time we saw a floor routine it was like oh there we go round off half turn stag split, jump or ring leap split ring split ring if she were basic it would have been a stag jump it was shari hunter shari knight so she was doing split i just ring, remember half turn split ring at adult gymnastics, this is what everybody was doing. Everyone was trying some version of round off something into a bounder. Yeah, so I love that we got all of that. She literally in this movie does that three times in one routine. That happens in this movie. Yeah. And, but we love a Jim Acro series. We Bring do. the sandwich. We love a Jim Acro on this show. It's yep. true. This, this is made for us. But this is also like the stunt doubles of insane back flexibility is the theme of this movie. Because Christy Phillips, who I feel like is really underutilized, also did stunts on this movie. Yes. So underutilized. Oh, okay. Nice. So she plays the blonde one, who's the main character's Andy and the... the L Les Leslie? Something? I don't know. Something. I was Scrunch like Lulu, Janie, her, something. I don't care. 
but yeah, yes. she's her that stunt double. They but also she got... really like gets to sell the performance on floor. Yes. Christy Phillips, they got all of her signature moves in as well. They got her reverse plans where she practically touches her butt to her head uh, in the movie. They got, which she did such a good job. But Christy Phillips is really one of the best gymnast stunt people in all these movies we've watched. Oh, the, she, I'm the best. She I is feel like, hand, yeah. She is amazing. Christy Phillips, of course, still, she was a national champion, U.S. national champion, didn't controversially, which we've talked about many times on the show, didn't make the 88 Olympic team. And even though she was on the highest, would have been the highest scoring team. And she is currently a top purvey judge in the U.S. You would see her in the background at the head table at the Pan Am Games and still buff as hell. Let me just tell you, I mm-hmm. her arms... They're a dream. My dream muscles are Christy Phillips' (laughs) arms. So she also got her signature move of, do you remember when, like, watching the videos of her as a little kid and in the backyard, she would, like, do all this crazy tumbling in the backyard and she did knee back handsprings? Like, onto her knees, back handspring in a series. I I don't remember that the video of the child, but I do remember her doing that. Oh, my God. Crazy. So they got that in there. The other thing why I say that she's such a great gymnast stunt double is because she did a whole beam routine and you never saw her face, even though it showed her the whole time. So, like, literally, she get she keeps her head down and turns it out of her plan. She does a series and turns her head sideways and keeps it down. I was like, this is so impressive. They didn't have to. I mean, you can obviously tell because they go from, like, actor to the buffest person you've ever seen stunt double (laughs) and then back to like, you know, just a normal person. But I do have to say that Andy was doing, uh, she's, she's a gymnast and the main character, Jenny, Joe, Casey, Joe, Joe Amy, Joe Johnson, and her pull-ups legit. Just shout out. There is also side note in Googling things about this movie to talk about it. There is a hilarious IMDb forum thread that I stumbled upon (gasps) of many people confidently asserting that obviously Amy Jo Johnson did her own stunts in this movie because she was a gymnast. And it's like, (laughs) sweetie, sweetie, that's not how, that's not, that's not how it works. But it's like so confident in like very surely, obviously I have the correct information and I know the facts here. I, oh my God, that IMDb thread, you guys, is gold. Did you read the one about the restaurant? No. That whole thread? Oh my God, you got to <laughs> read that one. But Weirdly, the internet, not always right. Oh, Despite it's the amount of confidence and authority you present yourself with, which is shocking information. <laughs> the other thing about the main character here is that she does do a beam routine with a full turn at the end. You can tell it's her. I mean, she's definitely had, there, it, there was not as much shock when they showed her, like, you know, saluting, because she could actually salute. Like, it, you could tell she's actually a gymnast and trained, um, which I really appreciated. Um, and clearly, like, there you know. There was not she, that much whoosh whoosh. Like, make it a no. really whoosh whoosh. Yeah, the, they chose the actresses much better. And this, we call everybody an actor now. Back in 97, it was actress. So, yeah, I just really appreciate that. But Christy Phillips, my God, I bet she could still do it, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, in terms she, of, like, the gymnastics. I feel like I appreciated that the skills we saw them doing were like believable for someone who would be training elite routines for the Olympics at this time. Like there's a whole scene where Andy's struggling with a shapash and you're like, yes, that is believable that that would be in your elite routine. If you're trying to get to the Olympics, like we see a real acro series on beam. It's not like when we're supposed to be for the most part, we'll talk about vault a little bit later but <laughs> on bars and beam on bars and beam and, and a little bounce. bit of floor. Uh, this well, up. Okay. I did a layout. Yeah. I'm going to the Olympics. But in we need I to see with real you. real routines and then no dismounts because this is obviously like a bookstore, not a gym, and you're not landing on that. That was my interpretation. I'm like, we're always just like walking into a bookstore and they're like, here's the gym. And I'm like, yeah, don't make don't make Shari land on that. <laughs> yeah, that's see, obviously like, just concrete. Don't see- do anything onto that. <laughs> Jaeger, Shaposh, we see yeah. a double back dismount. We see they fake a full in on floor, which was very well faked, I have to say. Mm. Because I'm always like, <laughs> why don't you just have them do it on trampoline at the same angle, shoot up, and then change it? Like I, And they did that. And I think it was, in terms of gymnastics movies, obviously, okay. Spencer, okay. please. Because I feel like there is one point where someone does an Arabian in back tuck out. And I'm like, I don't think that's physically possible. <laughs> there was like a kind of a weird Arabian, but at least they, you know, 
people were doing double Arabians uh, back yeah. then. And it was, they, it was sort of a podka pie, but I think that was supposed to be. So at mm. least they tried to be like, oh, this is a skill that's being done. So there were like legit skills in there. And I, I have yeah. to say overall, the stunting in this was probably the, I agree with you, the best. Yeah, it's definitely up there. Yeah. I think stick it is probably the other one that was the highest level of stunting. It is not like that Casey Jones, Quincy Jones medical examiner episode, which <laughs> you guys. Hey, don't knock it until you've watched it and you should watch it. I got a link to that too. The, that's one of our greatest, it's one of your greatest works of recapping <laughs> on the Donkey situation. Ever been. Oh, that's where the drug orange juice, that's yeah. such a good one, but uh -huh. I'll link to that so you guys can listen to that one too. Okay. All right. Okay. So. But I also, in like, with praising some of the gymnastics, because there was some good stuff going on, there are also some, like, exactly what you're looking for when watching this type of movie as a gym nerd, like, the most insane gymnastics parts of this movie, which I think needs to be a whole part of this recap. Because this movie opens with, like, there's no talking for, like, the first three or four minutes. There's actually very little lines in this movie anyway. I feel like they are definitely not comfortable talking about, like, eating disorders or anything. So they just tell that part of the story through musical montages. <laughs> they let, like, fake Natalie and Brulia do that for you. Like, the soundtrack is carrying a lot of weight. The soundtrack Dude, is doing a lot of work here. The soundtrack was so impressive for this. Love I was it. like... Wow, they must have had a contract with the studio to do. I mean, it's like pretty legit 90s soundtrack. It wasn't like, remember that other eating disorder gymnastics movie from like the 70s where it's just sad piano and fall and someone's doing gymnastics in the backyard? That one, I mean, immediately like someone's going to die. This is the worst. This is so sad. I'm already depressed. And it's just the opening sequence, like the credits in the beginning. They were so smart in this by going gymnastics, 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 gymnastics. And then somewhere there's a credit, but you barely notice it. Much smarter way to start a action movie, which is what gymnastics is, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, like four minutes of just like a purple windbreaker fever dream of just like, <laughs> what am I even looking at? We're at a competition or a gym. Like we see a lot of like doing hair and then smelling a flower. And that's like training, I guess. And then we're in this, like I'm, we're showing the image right now of like, what, is, where are we? Is this a gym or a hotel room? There's like a low beam there. The two people are on together. Someone's stretching into this, the middle of this low beam. There's like an armoire behind it and some garment bags. And it's like, is this, is this, supposed to be a training gym is where are we what am i looking at what is happening here also I, it was insane the problem with gymnastics movies is like someone tells people to stand up and stretch by straddling their legs putting one arm one hand on a hip and stretching the opposite direction yeah has a gymnast ever done that stretch <laughs> ever no you sit in your splits that's how gymnasts <laughs> stretch. That's the only way you kick your legs into split sideways, backwards, forward. These are the only except everyone take this note. Stop standing in a straddle and stretching sideways. Nobody does that. End of story. <laughs> this is my no only ever done gymnastics complaint. Also, I will say it took a whole one minute and seven seconds to get our first slow-mo close-up of hands over a chalk bucket clapping the chalk. Like, are you trying? Seven seconds. One minute, seven seconds? One Come minute on. and That's you way know too that long. you're supposed to be a gymnastics movie. You're supposed to have done that four times by then. That's the only shot. Oh man! We also got the Moody Vault Timer Showdown, which was a, was a real iconic moment in this movie. Impressive because we have two gymnasts doing two different vault entry entries. So that I, tells you it's not any time from like 2004 to 2012. Because yes. we've got a Yurchenko and a suit going back, going back to back. We have Magical. first though. They okay. I love the vaults side by side. Okay, this is also mm -hmm. a realistic thing for a gym side by side mm -hmm. vault. Or sometimes it's one. You, the runway goes opposite directions. So you can vault runway, vault the other. But um, <clears throat> first they do. Uh, it's like a they go showdown. One vault, then the other, and the first handspring is just like a tuck to handspring, like yeah. a level four, level mm -hmm. three. And the next one is the one, the other one warms up with a straight handspring. Cause you know, that's how you warm up for your chankos by doing handsprings. That makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I did appreciate the variety, but also I was just like, no one, there's one flip happened. It's elite vault and we only got <laughs> one flip. I don't know if they you had gone back. Vault. They had to go back to the drawing board, Jessica. 
They had Obviously. to doing too poorly. They had to restart from scratch at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, the most Digi important Blonde. part was the lighting. It's very like dim, moody lighting. Why do they think we have the to land facing each other at the end somehow? Because like now you've added a half twist, which was like way beyond what we were seeing. Like, oh my god, someone could do a half twist now and land looking at each other because of friendship slash rivalry. I at sunset in the dark. <laughs> right, sunset in the dark. Like if the lights like that, you can't work out in your gym because you will be blinded by the light. Like there's literally a thing about you know making sure the sun isn't shining in your eyes where you do this. I don't know why they think every gym is supposed to look like a Russian ballet studio from a documentary they saw as youth. Is mm -hmm. that what the directors mm -hmm. think? Anywho. Yeah. I mean, it does look exactly like the like ninety six and two thousand NBC fluffs about Round Lake. Like right. we definitely saw like Protonova stretching, probably in a straddle in a gym with this lighting. But she would have been in a full split on the ground. So, <laughs> and she would have had like a cool leather jacket on. Yeah, because Protonova and a mini skirt. Okay, yeah. so okay, I also have a question for you. What is an all-city gymnastics demonstration? This is the thing. I was like, first of all, okay, I love a ski floor outdoors under a giant bridge. This is great. Like, you could tell so many times this was not Seattle, by the way. I was like, <laughs> what skyline is that? Like, I think it was just shot in Vancouver or something. It but always first is. of all. Judging by the extreme Canadian accent of the English teacher, I do, uh, we have confirmed that this was in Canada. Right? I was like, Seattle's in Canada? Um, <laughs> it's the strongest enough. Canadian accent you've ever heard on a gymnastics after school special. But yeah, so I love an outdoor in a place that rains all the time and is very gray mm -hmm. gymnastics demonstration. But also what the the coach gives this introduction about the all gymnastics the mm -hmm. city and how it's going to fund all these gymnastics programs. And I was like, there's a socialist funding system like you pay firefighters, you pay kids to do gymnastics. I have never heard of such a thing in the United States. Like this is this is a we raise money and pay for all these kids to do gymnastics at all different clubs. What what program is this? So yeah. anywho, I know I, I feel was... like all the gyms in Seattle are like, wait, what? What now? Excuse there me. There is a there is an all city fund for gymnastics gyms where you just get to go like do a double full by the water and then you get money to run your gym for the year. It was the biggest clue they were in Canada. And not in the United States filming that. <laughs> also, I love how they do one double full and then leave. Yeah, no one will notice if no the Olympic notice. champion is missing. Team, team Jessica. Team medalist. <laughs> Sorry. Big deal. Okay. So also, as we all know, the way you get to, onto a U.S. Olympic team is you go to invitationals and then you go to a divisionals and then you go to trials. Yeah, divisionals. That is how it works. That is the system. We are told that many times. It's invitational so it's divisionals, divisionals, and then it's Olympic trials, and also you don't have to be elite before that. You could just be like hanging out at your high school on the cheerleading team, but then you go to you go to invitationals, so it's fine. Yeah, there is a great moment, like for Andy's like disastrous beam at invitationals, because there's like dramatic music for a solid four minutes that like a big disaster is coming a big disaster is coming and then she dismounts beam with a back tuck and i was like the disaster she's an elite gymnast and she only dismounts with a back tuck but no <laughs> that was so that, i was like oh no she only dismounted with a back tuck she didn't do it to be dismount she's gonna lose so many tenths but like no that was supposed to be amazing she just yeah. faints afterward <laughs> that's right. the disaster that was coming up also, did you notice she did a layout in her like high school? I'm not an elite meet, but then mm -hmm. at the big meet when she's an elite, she does a back tuck yeah. and it was supposed mm -hmm. to be great. But yeah, can okay, can we talk about the fainting? She faints. Mm -hmm. There's some alleged doctor or trainer there who's oh, just yeah. like, oh, fainting at this level is normal. Yeah. What? <laughs> I knew I saw that trainer doctor and I was like, Jessica's going to enjoy this guy. Oh, I was like, who is this idiot? Yeah. Also, this is where the gaslighting starts. This is where Start. the mom is like, I don't think she's eating enough. And the dad every time will be like, woman, quiet. You know nothing. <laughs> Man, coach, right. 
I'm not there. I never see my child, but obviously you that are there all the time have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (sighs) And also you have a gymnast who is literally unconscious on the competition floor and everyone's like, time for the next meet. (laughs) Let's let's not send her to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor until we find out. She didn't faint until after the back tuck. She hit her routine. Ergo, she advances to divisionals. Ergo, it's fine. I did love the dramatic face plant, like body roll faint. Mm -hmm. Because she didn't just like fall flat. She body rolled elegantly onto one cheek and like smashed her face up against the mat. You've got to make sure your good side is still up. Right. It was very (laughs) well done. Yeah. Okay. So I have to complain about divisionals because the fix is in on vault. Because Andy vaults a souk tuck half. Lands in kind of a deep karma car sl- squat, but like she hit her a, butt. She, she bounced from her leotard up. Yeah, standing. It's, it's, it's deep. It's deep. It's nine nine, and she gets nine four. And then we see blonde one vaults a your tank on half turn. turn, right with a lunge and scores nine point eight. Yeah, I mean, she did the vault. I was like, that's it, clearly. I know. Again, we were like, oh, qualified. These are the ill effects. Oh, no, that was good? Oh, okay. Your Jenko half turn. That's what she did. Which is not in any code. (laughs) Not, yes. Again. Like, that's probably not in the, like, the, you can't do that in NCAA, I bet. For a value? I I doubt it. I don't know. Only the front handsprings. There's got to be a bat. It would be so much more easy that way. So I bet they don't have it that way because the front <laughs> handspring twists. So literally, you guys, I mean, a Yurchenko half turn, like no flip, just Re- hands to feet. Repulsion off. Like you're just with a half turn. With but a half turn. Yeah. 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 I had the same. I had the same reaction. Nine eight at divisionals, which I guess is supposed to be nationals. Yes. <laughs> the equivalent of nationals. Nine eight. Or you go straight. I feel like Olympic this trials. whole movie with Andy being like, oh, I was just on my high school team. And now two months later, I'm going to like contend for the Olympics and train elite. The actual subtext message is like searing indictment of the lack of depth in the U.S. women's program from 1997 <laughs> to 1999 after the like all the 96 Olympians retired <laughs> and they have like no one left. I feel like that's actually the point of this movie. That's the statement they were trying to make. And I feel like, I mean, nailed it. Did a great job. They're like, look what Vault's getting a 9-8 at Nationals. Who's going <laughs> to win the medals now? Oh, my God. I love this. Uh, I also love when everyone's floor music is just the soundtrack to the movie. <laughs> Continuing into the start of the floor routine. And now that's your floor music. Right, Very at well least, done. At least in American Anthem, people had specific music. And it was a the music had a role. Mm-hmm. which I can play in my head right now and do the body rolls that were, you know, part of the too sexy, you don't look enough like a prepubescent child routine, which I do have to say about this movie. I also appreciated that Amy Jo Johnson has gone through puberty in this. They are not starting with like someone that's a child still in this. Um, and does which, like get to have a boyfriend. Yeah. Has, <laughs> like, that's what I mean. You're it's a high, school, high school thing. Right. High school things. Like she has normal stuff that she does. Like, oh, also back to the boyfriend thing. Can you I imagine? Can, I cannot stop talking about this weird boyfriend. Yeah, God, who steals candles from restaurants? It's weird He's that that's the part that really <laughs> that really he stuck. Because I was like, feel like you've probably done that before. I don't think I've. No, I don't. Okay. I. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've stole. I think like I've taken like salt and pepper packets and like an extra oh, well, yeah. sugar, but okay. not. I generally, I'm not a klepto like that. Good. Um. Thank you, Spencer, but I'm glad you think that of me. Mm-hmm. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> I would have a protest about it. It would be a big thing. Mm, and then, mm-hmm. you know, I would say why there was a reason the candle mm. should be free. But anyway, back to the boyfriend. Yeah. And this idea that a boyfriend can just come to your gymnastics practice, Ugh. walk into the middle of gymnastics practice. I know. Have you ever seen a boy, like, I don't want to say boy sports, but I'm saying sports balls that boys do, movie or TV show where the girlfriend shows up and just walks into the middle of the football field during practice and starts talking to the boy. Like that would be insane, right? <laughs> Everybody knows not to do that. I feel like the there are probably a ton of examples, but I, your point <laughs> is still granted, right? Like you don't do that. And so why did this happen? This is just showing what a dick he is basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you didn't come to my game. 
Yeah, she's training for like, the Olympics. She's an elite now, starting now. And you're like on what? The high school basketball team? Please. Priorities, Hold dude. Hold chair and sit down. Also, I love how like she's training, quote unquote, for I'm training for the Olympics because she moved gyms. Not yeah. because the only time you're actually training for the Olympics as a gymnast is when you make the team. That's the only time it's technically you're training for the Olympics. For the Olympics, yeah. Literally, you've made the team. Now you're actually training for it. You can be planning for it before that, but it's not a fact, a factual statement. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. Okay, we have to talk about the critical bars fall at <gasps> divisionals. So yeah. even though we have seen her doing gingers the entire movie on bars, now it's a Delch, a Pike Delchev that she invented. Right. Before she did it tucked, and we were supposed to be impressed, and I was like, oh, this movie's not going to be good with the gymnastics. But then she does it piked, so I guess we're supposed to see progress. So I, I, I appreciate sure. that. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> yeah. But it turns, it becomes a Delchev, I think, or something. And she falls on it, which is like the most normal bars fall. Like she falls, you fall on a same bar release. Yeah. Like, at the, which every gymnast would at this level would be very familiar with. And it is no, the most dramatic major possible injury from just like, like what, what are these mats? <laughs> if, if that fall is like. Right. If you fall on your stomach from mm -hmm. a Jaeger or a Ginger, yeah. like, and you hurt yourself this badly. Like I understand the point though of this is like, she hurts herself so badly because she all, all already has multiple spinal fracture and an ankle fracture, old fractures, new fractures, whatever, because she has not eaten enough and has trained too much. And so this is what happens. You get injured all the time and your bones get brittle and you're fractured and your heart and all the things go along with eating disorders um, is very realistic. But the, they should have made it look like she got hurt when she fell instead of just, just falls. On a Safely release, onto on her a stomach, mat. and then they, we cut to the doctor being like, "Thankfully, there's no permanent spinal cord damage." And I'm like, "Spinal cord damage." I do appreciate though that the doctor is a woman of color representation in this movie, and the only person with half a clue about anything in this. <laughs> yeah, the only one who's like, "Yeah." Your daughter's fucked up. Does she immediately send her to treatment, though? And it's like, you need to go to, we need to treat you for this eating disorder? Da, da. No, we don't see any of that. But at least she's the first person that, like, that says what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, like, other things with the gymnastics, because we do have an in-the-dark beam routine at the end, when she's, like, rediscovering, like, the sport and why she liked it in the first the place. We, the joy. We do get some, like solid in the dark beam which uh, every gymnastics movie needs but it's mostly just caressing the beam like she totally invented nastia in the gym skating spectacular exhibitions where you just kind of walk near the beam and like f caress it and touch it and have like a scarf and walk around it like then that's your beam routine so i feel like nastia owes her owes this movie a lot okay speaking of scarves <clears throat> mm -hmm. before we move on yeah did it stand out to you that the female characters in this movie are constantly wearing neck scarves? And I don't mean like <laughs> it's cold at Seattle, you wear a uh -huh. scarf. I mean like a piece of silky fabric that you tie in a knot for fashion around your neck. The teenagers did this. <laughs> the mom does this. I was, mm. I've never, I was like, no teenager in the 90s in the united states in seattle wore a silky neck scarf no this is mm. what judges wear teenagers <laughs> never the mom maybe to work because she works at a law firm maybe that's like a fashion i was so offended oh also uh, did you like how the mom gets a new job in seattle after like 13 minutes yeah well of course she did she's a paralegal of course the mom got a, <laughs> a job right away there's tons of law firms there pa everyone needs paralegals they don't get paid enough. They get treated like shit. And they have all the same stress as a lawyer. So shout out to paralegals everywhere. Of course. And she's Whitney Malik. Who wouldn't want her? Who wouldn't hire? Yeah, who wouldn't hire her? She's the law best. Firm. There are some other non-gymnastics things I need to talk about with this movie. Like <laughs> the going away party that the boyfriend allegedly throws for her before she moves from Portland to Seattle. Which, like, 
uh, cake and streamers and those things that those horn things that you blow with the paper on the end that go. Burr. And I'm like, what? 17 year old boy planned this house party. <laughs> so like, there are no parents here. The parents aren't here. And you're telling me the big plan was a cake and streamers. What high school is this movie taking place at? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was incredibly I unrealistic. really enjoyed them. Yeah. Also. Although that cake kind of looked good. It looked gross, but it looked good. Ugh, I don't. I, you say. know, it was a sheet cake. And you know how I feel about sheet cake trash. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the cake part away. Just eat the frosting. I'm not here for the cake part. <laughs> I want that disgusting frosting. That is what I want. Um, I do. I mean, you know, it's like two teenagers who are already making out all the time. The whole going away plan would be like, when are your parents not home? Yeah. Let's go to the bedroom. Like, that's a going away party. You get <laughs> rid of everybody. Let's go. What yeah. What kind of hor- what's the, the hormonal deficiency has already begun in these kids. Also, OK, I do want to say a couple things about before we go further into the non gymnastics. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. I do want to say the things I appreciate about and, and what I feel like was realistic and how I say this is like a 100 percent accurate movie, even though we can make fun of it and that's like the 90s you know after school special about eating disorders the things that it did so well is to show a toxic culture from the beginning to the end and how it was normalized right away and i don't just mean the coaches i mean the culture which means what an older gymnast like bitchy blonde Mm -hmm. immediately says to the younger gymnast like throwing up it's fine it's no big deal this is how you can binge and purge i also appreciated that this movie did not show how it's done like heathers i was i feel like the first movie i watched i was like oh that's how people do that uh so i appreciate it wasn't instructional in that way they were careful about that stuff but the fact that she has the other teammate who's talking is like Chug and painkillers. Ibuprofen. We never do anything about that. We just have like multiple scenes of just like guzzling pills. And then we're just like, "Mm, we're not going to talk about that again. Right. It's like part of like all the little things that I feel like they did so well. So the, so the painkillers, the normalizing the eating disorder from the teammates, the numbers, like, it's just like do 20 more. That's what a, a good coach just tells you to do 20 of those. Good coaching equals how many numbers you can do. The the blaming puberty that happens. Oh, I guess I'm just developing. That's why my gymnastics sucks now. So blaming puberty. Yeah. The drugs, the puking, the, the insinuations, uh, I, all of those things, I just felt like were so solid and someone being like, is this wrong? Well, we should defer to the expert. Well, the expert is the coach. Well, and then the mom saying like, well, how do we know if the coach is right? And that's the thing. We heard this literally at our NCAA live show when Taylor Rice, Taylor Rice, by the way, New mom just had a baby two days ago. So, or I think three days ago. So happy parenting to Taylor Rice and um, EB. We're both there, Elizabeth Price. So they both talked about how, you know, you defer to the coach because they're like, well, they're the expert. They've been doing this. They have all these Olympic champions. They should know. And how that toxic culture of doubting yourself and the parents gaslighting themselves about that. My favorite word drink every time I see gaslighting in this. That I thought was so well done in this movie, how it's just little things everywhere. And also the important thing about this movie was how with one sentence, this coach launched this gymnast into an eating disorder. One sentence. So he said, watch your calories when she was eating candy. And that was it. It started. And then all these other things in the gym reinforced it. But I think that's, you know, why there's the rules about like, you cannot talk. It has to be an expert talks to gymnasts about this because this type of personality person, especially there's other things going on in their lives so easily can launch an eating disorder. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, Mm -hmm. let's talk talk about about how on two occasions they have Wendy Malick pull up in front of a building and pull, just pull right up onto the curb. And no one's in this movie isn't about drunk driving either. (laughs) That's, didn't even know that. that's we have to talk about that there are two times it's just like onto the curb and i'm like good one. Oh my god i love that um, i also love the scene where pills girl like fell oh who she just fell while standing on the beam at one of these competitions like you see her in the background just standing still on the beam and then falls and i'm like well okay there's a problem right there but the, how <laughs> when she comes back at the gym and andy's like so you're quitting right She's like, no. And she's like, but you didn't make the Olympic team. So, like, <laughs> I did like that scene. She's like, oh, actually, I just like gymnastics. And he's like, what? That's that was weird. my favorite scene. Like, why would you do this if it's not about winning? What <laughs> why is would the, you do why, this? If you why would you torture yourself like this? 
It also, that fall made me appreciate Stick It more because Stick It had a whole scene. Of, remember the montage of just splitting the beam, switch leap, flip over the side of the beam, like all the bars <laughs> fall. I have, that is something Stick It did so well. Yeah. The other thing will, I will say that I like, I mean, this movie's not great, but one thing I did like is like none of the characters handle anything very well. Like, no one knows the right thing to say, and no one knows what to do, which I kind of like because realism. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I feel like if they were making this movie today, you know they would be so concerned about getting, like, the vibes and the messaging right that they would forget that they're supposed to be making a movie. And you'd have, like, three whole supporting characters who've never made a mistake in their whole lives, never said anything wrong, know the exact correct medical thing to say to every possible situation and speak like a tweet bot of an advocacy organization despite being like 14 and a half years old. And you're like, what is this? Who is this person? Have you ever existed? What are any of these characters? These people don't exist. So I like that, you know, everyone was bad at it, which is like what happens. Yep. Which brings me back to another thing about the toxic culture that was reinforced. There's a quote in here, which is literally something that we've heard gymnasts say was told to them at the Caroli Ranch when they went to national team camp, which is, quote, millions of girls would kill to be in my shoes right now. Um, Which is what people would say, don't complain about being at the ranch. A million girls would would kill to be on the national team and be here right now. Um, which brings yeah, Andy me to... says that in the conversation on the swing set with the best friend who kissed her boyfriend and doesn't apologize at all. And it's just like, hey. <laughs> also, to your point about no one knowing what to do and no one doing the right thing exactly. And, you know, until like finally, I do appreciate that at least there was someone who tried, even though it wasn't like the right approach, I think. But the best friend was like, I'm worried about you. Um, mm-hmm. But no one goes to an adult and is like, what's the right thing to do? How how do I approach this? But I do appreciate, to your point, I appreciate when there's movies that are like, like Heartstoppers like this. There's never been more emotionally mature t- yes, teenagers. It's the thing Listen, that drives me crazy about Heartstopper. I'm like, these, no one, and no the fourth season of like Sex this. Education, I was like, no one's like this. No one is like this. Anyone, especially that age. You don't have the skills. Um, but I do appreciate seeing the example of if people had these emotional skills, here's how you would act and here are the right steps to take. And so that part I appreciate about Heartstopper. I just want to say when you're like, that's how it's supposed to be. But this brings us to the buffet. What the hell is the scene where she suddenly is like, this is the one thing that the, they treat still in this movie. They treat eating disorder like it is you just have to eat. That's all you just mm-hmm. that's all you do. You just put pizza and eat pizza eaten and eating disorders over not like it's a mental health issue so she realizes she has mentioned therapy at the very end which like exceeded expectations for this movie right (laughs) they did do that she's in a group other girls like her uh and of course it's only girls it's not like this never happens to boys this isn't an, an issue that faces men but she realizes she has to eat so she goes to what is this place is this a hometown buffet where is it like senior citizens and a buffet? But it's like, I it was just such a random place. She's suddenly sitting alone with a tray of buffet food with an older woman enjoying her food so much and she's trying to make herself eat. It was just such an odd, like this is where she's going to go. Like it oh, was Jessica be- doesn't understand the real America, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like a teenager would like go somewhere and like, eat in the corner where it couldn't be seen or like he also she doesn't drive which is very strange but because back in the 97 all teenagers drove and they like couldn't wait to drive spencer back me up (laughs) (laughs) you're the only one that didn't have your license i feel like this was only one this was pre my sister didn't either this is pre the era of no teenagers get their licenses but anyway they would have like she would have like gone through a drive through and like sat in a car like where no one can see her it was just such an odd choice for this is this is the location where and at first i was like is she is at an old folks home is this is where like <laughs> i won't be judged they're just happy i'm here <laughs> oh yeah, yeah probably yeah i mean it's no worse than like training for the olympics in a bookstore I mean, <laughs> I think what they were doing. One more thing about the coach. I appreciate that his motto basically was work harder, not smarter. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. 
Is there anything else that you want to talk about in this movie? I mean, probably, but I'm fine. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure I got through all of my. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I'd really like that she did gymnastics at the end and was like, I can still love this and do a full turn and dance in a random, you know, a random school auditorium that has a single beam set up next to a stage yeah. with a spotlight on it. This is every child's dream. Also, I guess the 90s were where you could still sneak into a to school at oh, night. Yeah. No, by nothing has ever been locked in this movie. <laughs> no. There are no locks. The other thing we learned about gymnastics schools, they're never locked. You can never just locked. walk in. Okay. So I want to thank our anonymous club gym nerd member who went to the group commissions page and bought up all the shares for a group commission and made this happen. I didn't even think to suggest that for anybody. And also thank you anonymous to your, for your very kind words. And I'm so glad we could be here for you. And I hope you got some more giggles out of this commission on the, what was this movie called? The Perfect Body, which you can find or some, someone uploaded it to the YouTubes because you, we, we tried to like actually, you know, be good copyright citizens and buy it somewhere to download it, but you can't. So, and remember you can also get a Club Gym Nerd membership. You get a whole extra episode every week. You can commission mini commissions. You can dedicate an episode. If you want to propose to someone this holiday season, do it over your favorite podcast. If you just want us to yell something, we also have a rage meter and an enthusiasm meter. So you can just make Spencer like yell, uh, Amy Chow has the greatest form on bars ever or whatever you want to make him yell. You can do or that. other facts, yeah. Yes. <laughs> So we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget that we have the other episode on Panor and the Romanian mess happening that we put out earlier this week. And thank you so much for being here. Um, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can review us. Check out Club Gym Nerd. And until Friday for Behind the Scenes at Noon Pacific, remember to take off on gay, split on rights, and we'll see you on Friday. Thanks for listening.